Hello, your black world. This is Ivan Penn and the Relationship Guide, and we are going to discuss Beyonce's latest, steamiest, controversial GQ cover. So, Miss Relationship Guide, what are your thoughts on Beyonce's latest shoot for GQ? Well, my initial thought is, okay, this is definitely for men. That's my initial thought, because there is nothing about that photo that a woman can look at. You know, uh, and it, uh, of course, I'm speaking of like a heterosexual woman, uh, that a heterosexual woman can look at and say, you know, oh, my gosh, what a stunning photo. Um, I mean, of course, she's always pretty. We all know that Beyonce is very mm -hmm. attractive. But uh, personally, as a woman, I wasn't too thrilled with the photo. And the reason being was I know that she refers to herself as King B. So in my mind, when I think of Beyonce, I think of her being a lot more different than most artists, you know, and I hate to compare mm -hmm. the two, but let's just think about Rihanna. Rihanna's mm -hmm. latest GQ magazine cover was pretty similar. I mean, she was pretty much nude. And Beyonce, mm -hmm. I know that she just had her baby. She probably wanted to show off her nice figure, and that's great. But I was a bit disappointed because I felt like the photo was tasteless in comparison to other magazine cover shoots that she has done before. Beyonce, mm -hmm. when I think of her, I think of, um, you know, classy. Now, granted, yes, she dresses yeah. a little sultry, a little seductive when she's performing, but that's different. That's, you know, she's an entertainer, so obviously she's going to put on different costumes to fit her her mm -hmm. her show but when i saw the gq magazine photo uh, photo the cover photo i was really disappointed and i was like okay king b you're starting to blend in with everybody else you know i was <laughs> not it didn't really i don't know I, i'm not really feeling it there was another photo inside like part, part of the uh, the photo spread that i thought mm -hmm. was pretty good like she had on her heels and she was kind of like sitting on the wall or something like that. And I thought that would have been a good cover photo. It was sexy, but it wasn't too, you know, she wasn't giving too much. And I think the, the mm -hmm. thing that kind of trips me out with her cover shoot was uh, she's practically in panties. I mean, you're wearing panties and like yes. a cutoff jersey. And I know even mm -hmm. in the rest of the spread, you know, she has one where she's leaping in the air. Again, you're wearing practically panties and a bra. I mean, that's just not, mm -hmm. you know, I, I understand GQ is a male's magazine. Absolutely. So they have to cater to that demographic, but my gosh, I mean, Beyonce, she's just gorgeous. Anyway, she could have worn a, mm -hmm. a corduroy, you know, uh, pants and a wool sweater and still would have managed to pull off the same effect in my opinion. So I was a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like I said, for heterosexual women, there was nothing there for us to like, which is fine. It is a male's magazine. But when I think mm -hmm. of Beyonce, she calls herself King Beyonce. So you're just, you know, you're distinct, you're, you're distinguished, you're different from the rest of the artists. So let's be different. Mm -hmm. Let's think outside the box, you know, and that's where, I, that's what I feel about her, her shoot. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as I'm sure, you know, recently I did the, uh, commentary from the Christian perspective of what exactly should a Christian wear. And um, I agree with you also, you know, from the heterosexual female female point of view. And, um, you know, she could have worn those corduroy jeans and a, a fuzzy sweater. I mean, obviously, I don't know, all the fellas would be mad at us if <laughs> that's what happened. But, um, you know, the fact that she proclaims Christianity, or at least, you know, some people think that's up in the air now. Um, some people say, oh, well, now that she's with Jay-Z, she's Illuminati now. But based on an interview she had with Tyra Banks and Tyra on the Tyra show, and um, Tyra asked her about the manner in which she dresses and how that relates to her being a Christian young lady and her father being a leader in the church. And how does she reconcile the two? And what she told Tyra is, yes, I am a Christian, but I am also a superstar. And therefore, I must dress like a superstar. But then it starts to get kind of sticky. Yes, you're a superstar and great, you know, you're a Christian. However, does, does that then start to cast a negative light on Christians? And Christian women are even confused, um, perhaps, 
maybe Christian young girls who might like some of her music and maybe even identified with her at that time because she claimed Christianity yet is portraying herself in a manner that is um, calling for sexual attention um, outside of the marital context. You know, at that time she was not married and um, what exactly that said to Christian young ladies. So what do you think of it from, from that perspective? Um, well, I'll be honest, I am not a Christian, but um, I am very familiar with the, you know, with the Christian community. Um, and if I were a Christian, um, you know, I would think, I mean, obviously, being a superstar, you know, there are ways that you can do things. Um, I get what she's saying, but then I'm kind of like, well, what does that mean? And I think that's kind of what's missing here. I need to know what does that mean? So does that mean that, okay, you're a Christian, but you're a superstar, which means that you can engage in premarital sex and, you know, uh, take drugs or do drugs. And, you know, like, what does that mean? What does being a superstar entail? Because we all know that the entertainment industry is very dark. It can be a very dark, mm -hmm. demonic place. So, or industry. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. It's kind of difficult to answer that question because I don't know what she meant by saying that she is a superstar. Um, but I will say if I were a Christian mother and I had kids and I had little girls that looked up to her, I would sit them down and explain to them, you know, she is an entertainer. Um, she is not someone to be idolized. Don't get me wrong. Her achievements are amazing. She has broken so many records as a solo female artist, as well mm -hmm. as in her group. Um, so she is definitely an accomplished woman, but not mm -hmm. someone that I personally would want my kids to model. I, I'm, I would probably want them to model her work ethic because it's pretty obvious that she's a hard worker. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's very persistent and she seems to be very professional, but there are other areas that she lacks that I wouldn't dare want my kids to emulate. So, you know, I would just sit down and let them know, look, she's an entertainer. She's not someone whose words you should just eat up, respect her, you know, because she is good at what she does. You got to give her credit for that, mm -hmm. but you don't have mm -hmm. to be her. There's a very distinct difference between respecting someone and trying to emulate and be like them. And I would sit my kid down and say, look, you can respect her, but do not try to be like her. You can be yourself. Yeah. Yes. And it was um, very interesting to read some of the comments that were left on the piece. Obviously, we had a wide variety of comments from um, Christians and people who are not Christians. Some people who said, hey, why are you picking on Beyonce? And, you know, in all honesty, if they had read the article, they would know that Katy Perry was also brought up and Jessica Simpson because mm -hmm. they also come from Christian backgrounds with fathers who were leaders in the church. And um, one particular comment that I found especially interesting was um, what the way you talk, you would think that Christian women would have to wear burqas in order to, you know, not gain the attention of the opposite sex or get sexual attention from the opposite mm -hmm. sex. And um, thinking on that, and, you know, it was also addressed about, you know, some women commented, well, that just makes women feel oppressed that they can't wear certain things for fear of drawing sexual attention. And I just wanted to take a moment to address that. And just like you already commented and I um, affirmed, there are plenty of ways to still be attractive, an attractive female, a classy female, um, to still uphold your Christian values, or even if you just want to be a tasteful dresser and still be attractive to the opposite sex without making yourself as, well, let's say tasteless or presenting yourself in a manner of bearing all of your goods or putting all of your goods out there. Um, someone asked, well, what, do Christians have a dress code in the Bible? I didn't know the Bible had a dress code. No, the Bible does not have a dress code. And um, however, females do have to be conscious of how they present themselves. Um, and 
what that says to the opposite sex. Um, do you recall the incident in the news with the uh, sports reporter who was dressed seductively and um, football players on the field, they were at a practice, started to make comments towards her. And she was offended and it went to the media. Her name is not coming to me at the time, but it just kind of makes the point of whether you feel one way or the other about how you dress, whether you think, oh, I just think I look cute or, oh, I really do want sexual attention from the opposite sex or I really don't care. I just like this outfit. What you wear sends a message. And if she can't have the right, this particular reporter, to get angry, if um, the other football players on the team were throwing the ball in her direction to have an excuse to run over to where she was and um, yell um, catchphrases at her and then have all these interviews saying how it's not fair and it's not right and I should be able to wear what I want. Um, it's just what you wear sends the message, whether you're a Christian or not. Yeah, that's true. I definitely believe that image is everything. Um, and it's unfortunate because I think a lot of times people limit themselves with opportunities because for some reason, I think it's just a human, it's human nature that we look at and we kind of uh, make a judgment of someone, an assessment of someone just from looking at them. Again, I'm not saying that it's right, wrong or indifferent, but that's just the reality of the situation. The first thing that your first sense is, you know, when you look at someone, you're looking at them, you see them. So that triggers something in your brain. And again, I'm not saying that this is right or wrong, but it's just the truth of the matter. Um, now at the same token, I will say, I do remember the story that you just mentioned and I can't remember the reporter's name either. And I can't remember intricate details about that story, but I will say that I don't know if I agree that she should kind of, you know, be like, well, what do you expect? I don't think that we should, um, say that, you know, she deserved to be disrespected. I still think that the football player should have respected her because they were in a professional setting. Now, if they were yes. at a nightclub and they ran into her at the nightclub and she was dressed a certain way, that's another thing. I mean, again, I, I'm not, I don't condone or support men or anyone respecting another person um, or disrespecting, I'm sorry, disrespecting mm -hmm. another person so, based solely on how they dress. But on how they act or something like that. I can, I can understand some situations, but just strictly off of how a person dresses, I don't condone or, or agree with treating someone the way that you feel they should be treated just by looking at them. I think everybody is due respect initially. Um, so with that one, I would say, you know, if they were on the football field and she was indeed working, I do believe that they should not have been making any kind of inappropriate remarks to her, no matter what she had on, even if she didn't have anything on, if she was out there in a professional setting and, you know, HR, someone did not, uh, you know, kind of interject or remove her from the situation. They approved her going out there to do her job. I don't think she should have been harassed or whatever she said happened to her. But, um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm done with that one with that point. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think about, for instance, artists like Katy Perry or Jessica Simpson? And let's just, let's end on the note of, is it a conflict of interest to claim publicly affiliate yourself with a certain set of values, whether in this case, it would be Christian values, and then act in a way that is opposite. Should, should people have a problem with that or feel, or do they not have a right to have a problem with that? Uh, well, my, my, uh, my stand when it comes to celebrities and them disclosing information about themselves, personal information about themselves. Once they, once they put it out to the public, it is everybody's business. I'm sorry. You know, you're mm -hmm. a celebrity. You are a public figure. It's unfortunate. I don't necessarily alight. I don't like the fact that this 
country idolizes and worships things that celebrities do and say. But guess what? The reality mm -hmm. is people do. Uh, and it's unfortunate for the celebrity as well as it is for this nation. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, as a celebrity, as a public figure, once you put personal information out, once you disclose personal information about yourself to the general public, it does become their business. So what I would do if I were a celebrity and I were a Christian, I would keep that to myself. I mean, what does their religion have to do with them going in there and recording a song or performing on stage or whatever? Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, people need to leave their personal viewpoints as it pertain pertains to their sexuality, to religion, anything that's very personal. I think they should just keep that to themselves. Um, now, unless mm -hmm. they want to be a role model for that particular mm -hmm. ideology, if you're a Christian and you're a celebrity and you want to exude the characteristics of a Christian in the eyes of the public, then yes, by all means, go out there and say, you know, I am a, I am a proud Christian, but exude characteristics of a proud Christian. You can't say you're a Christian and then you are, you know, gyrating on stage, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with some dancers. And again, I, I do understand with entertainers, that's what they do. They're entertainers. Um, so I don't really read too deeply into that type of behavior. But again, when you're talking about ideologies or religion, um, I mean, if I were them, I just would not put that out there for the public to know. That would just be something that my family and I know, and we just handle it that way. So that's my stand on that. I agree. I agree that whatever you just set of values that you set before yourself, it's probably a good idea to uh, stick to them because, like you said, the public is watching, and the public <laughs> will uh, discuss it and chat about it and put it in your face, really. The public is also not always the nicest. <laughs> but um, thank you so much, Relationship Guide, for um, your views and thoughts on um, the Beyonce GQ cover. It was a wonderful conversation. And your Black World listeners, thank you for listening. And we look forward to sharing our next time with you. Until then, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>